good evening everybody. Um, I would just like to say to uh, the lady on the end that I think that you're very, very brave. I think you're very, very brave to be out here today to speak to everybody. I think, well, I can never imagine one as a, as a man, but I can never imagine how this has affected you and your family and for all the other women that have gone through what you've gone through. Uh, as a man, I could never dream, comprehend the pain and hurt caused by the Metropolitan Police on your family and friends. And for that, I think you're brave and everybody else who has gone through what you've gone through is also brave. In my case, uh, I have to, I'm a very fair, honest and direct person. And I am a, is it core member? What, what, what are we? Core participant of uh, this fake inquiry, as I, as I call it, because we seem to be moving away from a start date. So it's like a fake inquiry. I am, I am also a core participant. And I believe that everybody is on the same level and that we should and must respect everybody's uh, core participancy in, in this inquiry. But I do feel that what has happened to everybody else, what happened to me, is nowhere near that. that, that that's, that's how I feel. And even though I feel that way, I, I want to work with everybody else and assist because the common the common goal is to defeat the MPS and to get all the information we can do on what they have on us and to stop them doing that to anybody else. That that's our common goal and that's what I want to help to do because I feel that they shouldn't get away with any of this. And we should all work together as hard as possible to ensure that they don't. And for many of the women, and for those who also uh, were blacklisted, or I suppose we'll hear lots more about that after, we should do our best to ensure that we can get all the information, that we can answer those questions that we know or, or we believe right now that may never be answered. We want to know those answers and we deserve to, to know those answers. And we all need to work together to get those. So a bit about my story. From 1993 to 1999, publication of public inquiry, I was not a victim. I was just a main witness to a racist murder. Why was I only a victim? Why was I only, why was I only a witness and not a victim? Is because you take away that person's personality. You take away that person's being by just saying a witness. So nobody outside of my small circle felt sympathy for me. And so my small circle included my family, friends, and the goody goody metropolitan police. That, that was my circle. Until 1999, when everything changed and I became a victim of the murder. At that stage, the Met were still my goody goody friends. We had a few falling out because of the things that they were trying to do. We can, I'll answer all of those in any questions. But they were still my friends and I had a little bit of trust because I expected them to be able to protect me and to keep me safe as well as my family and friends. When I found out about the spying, I felt betrayed because I believed that the police were around me and supporting me because they wanted a conviction. Not because they wanted to spy on me and my friends, because if they were spying on me, naturally they would have been spying on my friends. I didn't believe that they would do anything like that to somebody like me. But it happened. And it's devastating to find out. It's devastating to now read about every single conversation I had with individual officers. Because I'm finally now beginning to get some of the documents that I was promised two years ago. 
and it's sad and you sit there and you believe you're having a conversation in a coffee shop with police officers about your feelings, how your life's going, maybe about your mental health, <coughs> and you feel that it's just a conversation with a police officer who's your friend, who you trust. But then every single word is jotted down and reported back with a slight, slight change of angle of how the words were delivered in the first place. And then you begin to see other documents about where I've been, who I've been speaking to. The organisation I used to support, Women for Justice, how many times I went out with them. Reports that are redacted, time and date are redacted, lots of information written is redacted. But I see everyone I see, I ask myself, what was the purpose? Why did they need to do this? Jane, my lawyer, always felt that the police were quite sneaky. Now, I was I'm new to all of that, so for me, it was, no, they're trying their best to help. I still believe that those who were working in the investigation, that there was some kind of corruption going on, I still felt that. But the others outside that, I felt that they, they were there to support us. So it wasn't really a huge surprise to find out that they bugged Jane's office when we had the meetings. It wasn't such a huge surprise, but it was upsetting. And the thing about it is, if they had just asked, can we record the meeting, we would have said, yes, please. We have nothing to hide. None of us have anything to hide. So the question was for me, is why did they feel that they needed to bug us? Why did they feel that they needed to spy on us? My view is, they wanted to do something that was unlawful, hence why they were spying. The last few things I want to say is very important. And I'll go deeper into how I feel about the spying and the policing relationship naturally in, in the questions. But as I started off, I want to finish and say, <coughs> the men are the people that we are after. Now I've been to a public inquiry, I've been involved in a public inquiry before, and the two main parties were at war and it didn't benefit us at all. So I want to say that, again, I am willing to help anybody who feels that I have something that can help them. I am willing to offer any help possible. And I would hope that every core participant would do the same, and that no core participant would speak negatively or badly about anybody else. And that we support everybody's claim, for justice, claim for information. I hope we can do that. And for the lawyers, I want the lawyers to understand it's not going to be them in the witness box. It's going to be us. We are the ones who are going to lose, lose sleep at night times. We are the ones who are going to be anxious. We are the ones who will be affected by knowing the date. Once you get that letter of the date that you're going in that witness box, Things change up here. And I just want the lawyers to remember, it's not you going to be in that witness box, it's going to be us. So when you're making your decisions, please remember who's going to be in that witness box. Thank you.